Environmental groups say as many as 100 orangutans have died in recent weeks due to a fire in Western Indonesia. Incredibly, the fire, which continues to burn, was deliberately lit and has even been approved by local authorities. Just 20 years ago, Tripa Forest, located here in Aceh in Indonesia's west, was populated by thousands of species of animals, including 3,000 Sumatran orangutans, the densest population of orangutans in the world. Now, 4,000 acres of the forest is well on its way to becoming a wasteland, and orangutan numbers have dwindled to just 200, thanks in part to a decision by the former Archinese governor, who allowed a palm oil company to clear the site for development. That so-called development involves draining the peat swamps and illegally clearing the forestry with fire, despite the area being part of the Lusa ecosystem, protected by Indonesian law since 2008 and home to these vulnerable creatures. If those fires continue to burn, habitat continues to be lost, we'll lose every one of those orangutans. Despite objections made by a coalition of environmental groups, an Indonesian court this week threw out a lawsuit challenging the destruction of the orangutan's ever-shrinking habitat. Given so much remains at stake, why would anyone approve the destruction of the Trepa Forest? And what, if anything, can be done for these beautiful creatures that have everything to lose? Leif Cox is from the Australian Orangutan Project. Leif, why would anyone approve a project like this? It's an appalling decision that clearly favours a few greedy, powerful people at the expense of Indonesian laws, which protects the forest, which protects the peat swamp, the critically endangered orangutans, and just as importantly, the local community's rights and livelihoods. So how many orangutans are actually left alive in that forest now? We believe recently they killed between 180 uh, orangutans. So we think there must be about 180 to 200 left that we're desperately trying to save in the next few weeks and months. Otherwise, they're all going to be killed. Are you hopeful you can stop the destruction in time? Well, we're going to do our best to uh, appeal the decision and have Indonesian laws upheld. But we need international pressure, we believe, to have the few greedy people's interests overturned for the interests of the many. Now, the palm oil industry is, is such a massive industry throughout Southeast Asia. Is there a practical need for it? There is a practical need for agriculture, but not unsustainable agriculture that is only viable economically by passing on the true cost of converting the forest onto the indigenous communities, the local communities, and through massive global warming. The conversion of rainforest to palm oil is causing more global warming gases than all the transport systems in the world combined. This is not sustainable, and this is not good for Indonesia and not good for the world. Leif, what do you think our government could or should do, if anything? Well, the major problem is 80% of these orangutans live outside of protected areas in degraded forests. The, the Australian government now has already relationships with Indonesia about reducing emissions through deforestation. They should put pressure on the national government to, to tell the Achenese courts to actually uphold the Indonesian laws in favour of the local communities, wildlife, sustainable economies and also the global communities because of the global warming issues. It's a very distressing story. Thanks very much for your time, Lee. Thank you very much. This is, this is my son's chosen cause. I mean, admittedly, I do have a red-headed son, but uh, <laughs> so, yeah, it is his, yeah, I mean, at, at the age of seven, he's yeah, picked this great. one. Well, I, 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 I hate to say it, but he needs to work harder. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I know, <laughs> I know. Yeah, come on, Conrad, get a move on. Save those.